So, here's the real question. How do dentists like you, who aren't willing to let insurance dictate how you will run your practice, who want to create incredibly profitable practices without sacrificing your time or sanity, how do you create the strategies to ensure your practice not only survives, but thrives in the 21st century? That's the blaring question, and Dr. Steve Shalins is here to provide the answers. Welcome to Dental Practice Freedom Radio. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dr. Steve Schlins. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Dental Practice Freedom Radio. And, uh, you know, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, very important to me. As some of you know, I have a fee-for-service practice. And uh, over the last four to five years, I have met some amazing, amazing mentors in my life. And uh, they've all gotten me to certain points. In, and then I went on to other things. And, and uh, you know, I always want to talk about what got me started into fee-for-service dentistry and how do I structure my practice the way that I do, which I think is one of the most profitable ways to structure your practice, which is newsflash, spend some time with your patients um, and understand what it is they want and how you can help them. And uh, over the course, I, I'm basically going to lay out four different podcast episodes and each one is going to break down part of the process for me. So um, the next episode is actually going to deal with the new patient interview and the episode after that is going to be what I cover in an exam. And then the episode after that is going to be what I cover in a review of findings, right? But before I dig into all of that, I want to go back through my background and where my philosophy and, and how I think patients um, should be treated came from. Uh, when I graduated from school, I went to work as an associate in a Medicaid PPO-based office, and uh, it was not for me. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And um, after a year, I was completely burnt out. And I know some people can thrive in those environments. That just was not for me. I, I saw patient after patient after patient and um, really started to question my ability to help these patients. And uh, that led me to you know, practice ownership. And then as soon as I was a practice owner, I realized, wow, um, I have no idea how to do this at all. And so I was reading books like The E-Myth, and they were talking about the entrepreneurial seizure, and I was in that moment, a um, couple months into practice, uh, knowing that what I had as a practice owner was like nirvana compared to where I came from um, in terms of workflow and what I was doing and the impact I was having. But the rain was on the wall for me that if I was going to continue to have this office that I bought be fee-for-service, but not only just be there, but also start to thrive and, and um take it to the next level, I had to take myself to the next level. And so I went through an immense period of reading. And the first thing that I got introduced to was um, Spear Education uh, through a study club. And I met some amazing people through that. Um, Institute Doug Phillips uh, was a, a dentist right down the road for me. And he was an amazing, amazing mentor, a hands-on mentor for me at a time that I needed that in my life and in my practice. And uh, he's still, you know, we still contact, um, not as much in, or as frequently as we used to, but um, I still consider him a dear friend. And um, that led me into the Schuster Center. So some of you know about the Schuster Center, and I was a mentor there. Um, and I'm saying I'm a lot. I apologize. I'm going to work on this. This is the one thing about it. I finally listened to one of my own podcast episodes. I know this is crazy, but I never listened to any of the podcast episodes after I, I play them. And I listened to one. I said, oh, my gosh, I say I'm um, all the time. Why am I doing that? I sound like I'm in high school. And some people still think I'm in high school. So I guess that, I guess that makes sense. But uh, when I went to the Schuster Center, uh, that was the first time that I was ever exposed to the model of – taking a three, not just necessarily three visits, but I think three distinct entities, which is the interview process, the exam process, and then finally the uh, review of findings process, the initial review. And, you know, there's obviously some added complexity, and I'll talk about that in this, the next three podcast episodes, but it was the first time that I ever got introduced to dentists like L.D. Pankey. And I know some of you who are listening to this have been to the Panky Institute. And from a philosophy-based standpoint, uh, everything that L.D. Panky represented, I, as a practice owner and as a dentist, I espoused to. Like, that was, to me, the way that every patient that comes in your practice should be interacted with. And if you guys have never read um, the book of philosophy, 
of the practice of dentistry. Uh, it's a it's just an amazing amazing book. And if you can get your hands on any of you know notes from dentists that have been through the Panky Institute, just some amazing stuff. And so I was exposed to that world. I was exposed to the world of Bob Barkley. And uh, again, if you can get uh, his book, I think it's a uh, prevention uh, prevention in the practice or something. It's it's very hard to find. So if you type in Bob Barkley, almost nothing is talked about with Bob Barkley anymore, unless you go to dentists that have were around in the 60s. And um, unfortunately, Bob Barkley passed away way too early in a plane uh, plane wreck. But his stuff lives on. His legacy lives on. And if you talk to dentists that have been through the Panky Institute or even some Dawson uh, dentist, Bob Barkley will come up. And you may not know who that is, but you should do some research on him um, because he came up, I think, it, really in recording, like the first dentist to come up with this three, the three-part exam process. And um, started to get introduced to all of these things. And I started to connect the pieces and I was thinking to myself, because at the time I had been learning some technical training. And so here I am, I'm doing what dentists do, right? I go get more technical training. I go to Spear and then I uh, went to the Texas Center for Occlusal Studies and I learned more continuing education there and more advanced training and how to treat TMJ and how to treat headaches and all these things, uh, how to restore mouths and how to do full mouth rehabilitations with uh, conservatively with composite and it was all this amazing stuff, but it came back at the end of the day. If you didn't have the right new patient process in place, it was very difficult to have someone as a patient accept your finest dentistry. And when I saw stuff like Panky and Barkley talk about prevention and, and partnering with the patient and form this collaboration with the patient, um, I was just astounded. And they never taught us that in dental school. Um, even in dental school, you know, your exam process is a little bit longer, but it was always like diagnose, give them a treatment plan and let them go. And you could co-create a plan, but it wasn't like this. It wasn't really understanding the wants of the patients, putting them into a consult room and, and really understand the nature of, of what it is they wanted and why they wanted it and give them a, a, a target to shoot for, a, a future picture of what's possible with dentistry. And I just fell in love with that model. And I still espouse and use it today, um, even though I'm not in my practice as much as I was. Like, I can't do a, I don't feel comfortable if I'm seeing a new patient and I don't do some type of interview before I ever put them into a, a treatment room. I know some dentists that are listening to this, you guys got different practices and you might be more insurance based. You might not have time to do this, but I'm telling you that process, the bonding process with the patient. And the patient understands what you're about as the dentist, and I understand what the patient is about as a patient and as a person, then I can have a dialogue, right? As opposed to me monologuing, right? So, you know, I monologue to the patient, I talk about how great our office is, blah, 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 blah. But I never hear their side of the story. I never hear what their past experiences have been. I've never I, I never heard about, you know, what made them switch dentists in the first place and why are they here? Like, what is the true reason they're here? Because if they say, I'm here to get a cleaning and I want to come in, that's not why they're there. Nobody wants to do that. Like, there's something else. There's a reason why they're there. And, you know, most of the time, and I'm going to get into this in the interview process, but most of the time they're there because they want to be healthy. And patients think that going in the dentist every six months is what you do to get healthy, which we know that's not the case. We have patients that come in every six months and they need to come in every six hours. But we also have patients that come in every six months, but literally they could probably go a decade and never have any issues. And so we know that that's not a correlation to dental health. But in the patient's mind, that is. So when they're saying, I want to come in and get established again and go through the routine, what they're really telling you is they want to get healthy. And so, you know, the, the pieces started to connect. And like the whole purpose of this podcast episode is if you are in a fee-for-service model or if you ascribe to have a insurance a less involved insurance-based practice, you do have to do some things in your new patient experience to separate yourself from every dentist that this person has ever talked to before in their life. And that comes from understanding the process and understanding how to connect with patients at a deeper level. It's not talking about how great your technical dentistry is. It's not even talking about your cone beam or, and I know we talked about this, I think on the last podcast episode, uh, the comb beam and the technology and how great that is. That's not why they're there. 
right? You know, look at medicine, for example, and then use that to your advantage in your dental practice. Like the traditional medical model is that the patients will come in and you better get all your questions asked in five minutes because at five minutes, that doctor's out of that office again and you will never see them because that's how much time insurance has allowed the doctor to interact with the patient. We in dentistry don't have that problem yet. So we need to take advantage of that. That new patient process for me is absolutely sacred. Like it's the one thing I can't do without. I can do without a lot of stuff in my practice. And I know I've seen some of your practices that listen to this podcast. They're amazing. They're like meccas. They're so beautiful. And you look at mine and mine's an older office and I bought it and I put some money into renovations, but I didn't re-gut the whole thing and redo it because I didn't own the building. I still don't. So I've made do with what I have, but what I lack in technology and new equipment, I have a new chair and new hand pieces and stuff that I actually need to do dentistry with, but like all the other stuff, I got a really nice consult room and then I really focused on the new patient experience. And um, I know, you know, I saw a dramatic difference when I started to do that, but it does take some time. And so, you know, if you have an environment where you can't spend 40 minutes with a new patient before you ever sit them into a chair, you have to make a decision. You have to either decide, I want to start to move in that route because I am doing higher level dentistry. And I will tell you one thing, if you are doing higher in dentistry, but you see the patient first in a chair, very, very difficult for you ever to get them to say yes to anything. And I, I don't want to go into it in this episode, but there is a fundamental f- flaw and problem with that approach. And you have to get them outside of the chair so that you can establish a new belief pattern, a new expectation of what dentistry is all about. So um, I'll talk about that more in the interview podcast. But when we go into the next episode, I just wanted to lay the foundation and the framework of what I'm going to be talking about in the next three episodes, because this stuff is kind of gold. I'm going to tell you, this is the stuff that I learned spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to go learn it. And I'm going to tell you a lot of it in these podcast episodes. So um, hopefully you tune in because they're going to be really, really, really good. And so to recap, go check out Bob Barkley. If you don't know who that is, go check out um, LD Panky. If you don't know who that is, Um, he actually had, I don't know if they still have it or not, but he had an interview that they did um, with uh, like the American Academy of, dentist or something, I don't know, uh, some type of organization. And he did an interview and it was on uh, University of Michigan's dental site, uh, their YouTube page. And I don't know if they took it down or not, but it was amazing. I'm going to see if I can find that. But go go search LD Panky. Go search Bob Barkley. Go, um, go look at some of what Dr. Schuster talks about. Go look at uh, Bob Frazier is amazing with this kind of stuff, right? So there's all of these resources from a relationship-based standpoint. If you go to uh, Lynn Carlisle's In a Spirit of Caring, he used to have a site called In a Spirit of Caring. I think it's inaspiritofcaring.org maybe. Um, but if you just type in In a Spirit of Caring on the internet, it'll come up. And Lynn Carlisle has books, but he has this whole... Um, just vast array of articles from relationship-based dentist. I encourage you, if you are ascribing and and aspiring to be a fee-for-service dentist that can thrive, um, for me, that's kind of a foundation. And then once you get to that point, you can start to modify it so that it makes sense in the 21st century. So, you know, you guys asked me, where did I get a lot of my information from and my philosophy of how patients should be treated? And it comes from that model. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's still about the relationship. It's not about the technology. It's not about any of those things. It's about the relationship. Now, I differ with a lot of my mentors in how you can establish the relationship. I think things go so fast in today's society that we can't probably do three appointments like we used to, right? Patients just aren't as tolerant of that. But if you make that first experience amazing, and I'm not talking about wowing them with hand towels and, you know, massage therapy. It's pretty, like, that's actually been done a lot. I'm talking about authentic, genuine connection with your patients. They will go, I've never had anything like this ever in my life. I don't know if I like it or not, but, man, this guy is on a different planet when it comes to care. That's what I want to hear. So um, hopefully you got some value out of this. Pay attention to the next three episodes because I'm going to be talking about the interview, the exam, and the review of finding. And um, as always, thank you guys so much for the feedback. I'm getting a lot of great reviews. I just got a review the other day and um, some 
words of you know encouragement and like keep up the great work. So that means so much to me. If you guys can go to the Facebook page, Dental Practice Freedom Radio, uh, just leave me some comments, some love. That'd be great. If you can leave a review on the actual podcast on iTunes, that would be phenomenal. I would really, really appreciate that. And just as a thank you for all of the listeners. All you have to do to get your free case acceptance master pack, which is five videos on how to increase your case acceptance, all you have to do is go to dentalpracticefreedomradio.com, and then once you get there, uh, you just send me your email, say, hey, I want the free master pack. You get the free master pack, and you'll be able to help increase your own case acceptance, just as my thank you for listening. So hopefully you guys have a great day, great night, whenever you're listening to this, and I will talk to you soon. so much for listening to this episode on Dental Practice Freedom Radio with Dr. Steve Schulentz. We'll see you on the next episode.